Welcome back. Things are all tied up. Much like my tongue. I'm trying to speak really fast. Casting solo here. Bomber. Four and six for League 2015. He's played 13 matches total. Being uh, three of those on Star Tail in the past. He's two and four versus Protoss. He's got that downward arrow, but he does have a winning record versus Trap. And he was one of the best TV players in the world at a time. Now is not that time, however. A win here would be great for Spenu, give them the momentum they need. Going to that ZBZ. Trap. Losing record versus Terran, but it's a small record. He's five and four. He's been squeezed into Jenner's roster a lot more recently. Rogue not always playing. There's been a lot of swaps. Cure as well. Not playing very often recently, so Trap has gained a little bit more of a spot on the regular four. He's really trying to prove himself. I feel like he's improved a lot. He's got that arrow for a reason. That sideways arrow, you know, it's no longer a down arrow trap. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, the winner of this will take the lead. Will it be Bomber, the fan favorite? Or will it be Trap, the Protoss hero here on Iron Fortress? Let's get into the game. In the top left in pink, it's Bomber. His opponent to the bottom right in green is Trap. And on screen in the center is a snack. Now, this is a large four player map. They spawn at cross positions. And that means that in the current meta, drop play much less likely on a bomber, especially because it's so difficult to pull off on this map. And we might see a fast third base out of him. Now for the Protoss on this map, the third base is somewhat far away. It's not unreasonably far away, but it is, it is somewhat far away. So I think we're gonna see Trap take a safer transition. And I don't expect any sort of cheese out of this player. But ever since Trap transitioned, um, he was on STX, the very beginning of uh, Kespa's transition to StarCraft II, and the death of Brood War, Kespa-wise anyways, the death of the Star Leagues and old Pro Leagues and whatnot. Uh, when Trap transitioned, the one thing I noticed about him right away was that his defense was incredible. His ability to assess where drops are going to be and stop them from even unloading was really, really solid. And we're talking Wings of Liberty, right? So this was a while ago. But his defense against drops was one of the things I noticed about him the most in this matchup. The player who loves to just safely transition to that third base slowly, but carefully. He might get an advantage because his opponents try to drop him and he shuts him down so hard. That's the type of player Trap often is. Not a player known to cheese. Not a player known to proxy. Is a more standard play out of this guy. What I expect to see from Trap in this game is a quick Robo, fast Observer, into quick two base Robotics Bay, into a third base after scouting, just simply with his Observers, with his Probe Scout, should he even decide to send a Probe Scout, a lot of Protoss is skipping that on this map. So, let's see how this unfolds. Okay, there's the Probe Scout. We will be sending it. Quick Double Gas, which is a bit unique actually on this map. Trap just wants to get a quick Mothership Core. Though we did see Bomber went for a CC first, no surprise there. Don't need to tell you guys that. See it on screen. There's the Nexus. And it is a quick Mothership Core indeed. With all that extra gas. We could see a Stargate here. Would surprise me a little bit. But it is kind of the way of doing things right now. And Korean players don't often... There is the Stargate. But Korean players don't often play the the matchup to the map. I feel like certain players are really good at that. But then your all-around defensive players, like Trap, are really much more oriented on 
Okay, this is the build. I would do this on Coda, Echo, this map, Moonlight Madness. I'm going to do it wherever. Cool Ostravine, yeah, I'm going to Stargate. That's what, that's what I'm practicing. So, they think of the map as more like, okay, there's these weird variations of the map. The map's a little bit bigger, a little bit smaller, whatever. It's four spawns or whatever, but they don't think like, okay, well, maybe Stargate isn't as good on this map because it's going to take forever to get to this base. And, you know, the Stargate is still viable. He's going to try to deny this SCV scout. I don't think he'll be able to. You know what? You will. And actually, we'll get a kill because the SCV turned around. Oops. Good uh, good positioning there. So no scout for Bomber. Bomber is transitioning to a fast follow-up with Factory and Starport tech. Probably going to see Hellions here. Although, no, it's going to be Widow Mines. Hellions a bit tougher to pull off at cross spawns because even though they are fast, they do take a long time to get across the map. If he uses the Widow Mines for a drop, it's going to take a while to get there, but it can be quite strong against this Oracle opening. He could also alternatively decide to use them defensively or even split them using one defensively and one aggressively. Got a lot of different choices here. Based on the rally, it looks like it is going to be defensively, and this may shut this Oracle down cold, hard in its tracks. Here it comes. Widow Mine's not ready at the natural. And here it comes. One kill, second. Third. Nope, only gets two. Widow Mine was obviously spotted. Second one, however, where is it? Oh, it's right there on the Spenu logo. And there it goes. But you know what? A lot of SCV damage with that as well. But goodbye, Oracle. Six kills in total, the second Oracle. He decides to turn around and add a third Nexus with it. Transition point for Trap is going to be to get that Robotics up. It's going Phoenix's first. Wants to shut down the drops because obviously with that Oracle, he scouted that that is going to be what he's up against. With no detection, and the first Phoenix isn't even done yet, this could do a lot of damage. There are three Widow Mines in that drop. He literally has one Stalker, one Oracle, and one Mothership Core. The Robo isn't even halfway done. The Oracle has to be used for detection here. Checking where it is right now. The Oracle is in between the natural and the main base on the ramp. If he loses that for any reason, say a Widow Mine kills it, or if it's out of position, this could be disastrous damage. Okay, just gonna try to bait it. Baits out that early detection. But this should buy enough time for the Phoenix to come out. The Observer will be underway in just a moment as that Robotics is finishing. The third base is scouted. And with this build by Bomber, he just simply doesn't have enough of a ground force to hit that directly just yet. Even though the, um, even though the, oh, oops. Oops, awkward. Okay. <laughs> even though he knows even though he saw the, the build, he doesn't know how small the gateway army is, is what I was getting at. By the way, is it just me? Or is that in the middle of the map? Does that look like the Twitter logo on the mini map? That little white spot. Hashtag I don't know. Hashtag uh, Iron Fortress. At this point in time, look at the army supply versus work account. With a fast third nexus, you have a fast third section of chrono boost, third chrono pool, if you will. So you can chrono boost three times as much on your probes. You can get up to 60 probes in no time. Bomber, even with the CC first, is down 20 workers right now. Even with double mules, it's not going to be enough. He needs to do something to punish this, or he's just simply going to get way too far behind. And I feel if he wants to, like, for example, do the um, lazy boy pull, it's just... It's just simply, his timing is going to be so difficult to hit. Because everything is different here. Look at this probe scout. Spots the army out until the observer's ready. Now the observer's there. Good coverage here. White trap. Only taking one gas at this third base. Look how careful trap is playing right now. Not taking any unnecessary risks. Three phoenixes out currently. There are four widow mines on the map. Only three with this army, it appears. First Colossus is out, the second one is on the way. Probably wants to spend a bit more Chrono Boost on those units now, rather than his probes. Oracle's gonna tag this. Oh, should be tagging this! Okay. Alright. Widowmind's used as zoning tools here. Nexus Cannon goes down. He's actually gonna grab these Widowmind's, has to cancel the lift. Not a ton of zealots for buffers, but every second that goes by, he gets more warpins, and four gateways are about to finish. It's going to give him a lot more warping potential. 
and I cannot stress enough how sick Trap's economy is right now. Every second you give him, he is going to have more and more units. Bomber needs to do serious damage, and almost killing a pylon is not going to cut it. That is not enough damage. Like I said, Trap is one of the best defensive players you will ever see in this matchup. Notice how he never overextends. He never has a Colossus out of position. That is his skill. Look at that. Look at that control. Don't even think about it, Bomber. Move that medevac back. <laughs> even cannons coming up here. A ton of zealots now to buffer with those extra gateways. And this army is constantly tagged and has an observer on it. Where are you going to find? What damage can you find here? Five phoenixes on the map as well. He's trying to get this oracle. Okay, Bomber coming from two angles here. Ton of zealots to buffer, though. And those colossi are totally safe with phoenixes here to buffer. Does accidentally walk on top of the Widow Mines, but with these cannons here, it's so tough for Bomber to actually break this. Graviton lives on top of those Marauders, and his entire Bioforce gets pushed back. And that is game, essentially, ladies and gentlemen. Bomber has no legs to stand on anymore in this game. Can't even kill these Colossi. Where are the Vikings going? Don't even know what to say. Insanely one-sided. Now there's no follow-up whatsoever for Bomber. What's he gonna do now? What's he gonna do now? It's a rhetorical question. Twitch chat, I know you're in there like, well, I don't know, no. Templar Archives on the way. More and more units getting picked off here. Taking out those Widow Mines. 1-1 one, one upgrades out for Bomber. He has that versus the plus one uh, armor only for Trap, but Charge is about to finish. He's going to have Archons. He can catch up with his upgrades super easy because he's got Chrono Boost. And also, keep in mind, I don't think there's an Armory for Bomber. I'm going to check that. Well, he never planned on going late game anyways, hoping to winning the game right there against Trap, of all people. Study your opponent. Know him. Know his style. Not try to end the game on a timing attack cross spawns on Iron Fortress against Trap. Now he's going to do the last ditch pull the boys attempt. Now this army for trap does have 12 zealots in it. Going to kill a factory as well perhaps with these phoenixes to eliminate vision. There's a cannon here and he can actually make archons. It's expensive. He sees this coming. Going to make one archon. Okay, here we go. This is Bomber's last chance. It could work. But look at the army supply, 99 to 75 in Trap's favor. The Vikings, there's not a lot of them. He's going to try to snipe this Mothership Core. That's a first step. And this army is kind of stuck back here. The Zealots are at the back. Now he comes in. The Phoenixes are going to wipe the floor with these Vikings, though. And even the Colossus comes on the right side. The Archon is doing so much extra damage at the back. And the Zealots have charge. This is going to be a stop. GG. That was so one-sided. Trap saying, I am. The Protoss will defend your push. It's what I've been doing since day one, since Casper said I couldn't play StarCraft 1 anymore. Go back, you don't believe me, go back and watch his VODs in the GSTL with Soul. Go back and watch his VODs in like the OSL. Okay, him and Flying. Two excellent Protoss players who switched over to StarCraft 2 early on. One of the best Protosses at maintaining his cool, not making mistakes. The only mistake he really made in that game, I, I could argue, is when he walked his Colossi too far into those Widow Mines. That was the only thing he did wrong. By the way, this studio is packed right now. Dinner fans are getting hyped because they might actually take a match. One win away right now of tying up their score within the matchup. All right. This is a pretty tense moment now for Spanu. However, going to the final match, it's going to be a Zerg versus Zerg. Curious representing Spanu versus Rogue. This is absolutely a match that Curious can take. This is a mirror matchup. It is going to be on Cactus Valley, our biggest map in the pool.